This is Ollie, who was very upset when I was here. He has some problems with men that he doesn't know. Uh, but in this video, we're gonna talk about his resource guarding problem, and we're gonna share tips and secrets that you can use if you have a dog that resource guards things. Now, this is one of his favorite things. It's one of the kids' blankets, and as you can see, uh, it's been shredded, and it's not been shredded by the kids. So he likes to grab it, and he typically likes to go over here. Um, now, resource guarding is actually not considered a classified and aggressive behavior. People always look at me like I'm crazy when I say that, but because when you remove the resource, the dog's behavior, typically the aggressive behavior dis disappears right away. So um, now resource guarding is very natural for dogs. In the wild, if they have a chicken or something like that and you come up and try to take their chicken or another dog does, they're gonna have to defend that chicken because they need that for food. And so it's very natural. And resource guarding is not indicative of the dog that's been uh, poorly trained or poorly behaved. All dogs across the spectrum develop this problem. Dogs from resource guard people, places, or things. Typically it's high value items like uh, food or bones. In this case, this is the high value item that he really likes. And so he likes to take it over there and shred. Now he may not do it. Usually when I'm doing these videos, the dog doesn't actually demonstrate it. Now, if the dog is resource guarding, typically when you, when you get to us, as you're approaching it, he's gonna get stiffer, <coughs> stiffer, and usually their head is down and it's <coughs> <coughs> Sorry, buddy, don't mean to spook you. Let's, let's fix that, because I know that we had some problems. Here you go, buddy. Positive reinforcement. Um, so it, that, that, that nasty sound, I mean, if you try to take something from a dog when it's resource guarding, it will bite anybody, including its guardians. And, uh, but again, it's not considered aggression because once you remove the object. But if you, every time you forcibly take something away from a dog, that validates the dog's fear. The reason they're resource guarding, they think you're gonna take their stuff. In this, pro, in this video, we're gonna talk about, uh, or I'm gonna demonstrate how you can help a dog start to see something, that, or have, when it has something, it doesn't need to guard it down. Um, yes, you like that, buddy, huh? Good job. Yeah, we like that. So um, if we take it away, then that's validating the dog's fears. What we wanna do is teach the dog that when we approach, when it has a high value item, it's not gonna take, we're not here to take their stuff, we're gonna make their situation better. Now, before you do this, you really wanna shape your dog into dropping things on command. And I've already talked to the guardians how to do that. I'm gonna explain how to do it real quickly in this video. When your dog has a low value item, a ball, a bone, something they're allowed to have, something they're not a resource guarder for, hey buddy, then what you wanna do is while they have it in their mouth and they're just kinda of hanging on the floor and they've got it exclusively in their mouth, go over there with a the high value treat, Ollie, and just touch it and hold it here. They'll try to take it with the object in their mouth and wait for them to drop it. When they drop it, pop the treat in the mouth and say the word drop and don't show any interest in the object. Don't pick it up, not at all. Basically what we're telling the dog is when you have stuff and we ask you to drop it, we just ask you to put it on the ground temporarily, we'll give you something better than what you have and then you get original stuff back. That's a pretty good deal. Now for dogs, you ha and, and if you do get to the point where you have to take away underwear or something he's not allowed to have, you wanna have a bully stick or something of equal or greater value. Otherwise if you take it away and don't give him something of equal or greater value, he's gonna be less likely to drop it first. So you have to teach a dog to drop. You don't have to teach a dog to drop, but it's always a good idea when you're doing the technique that I'm going over now. So basically what we do is we want him to actually get the object that he wants, and of course he probably is not gonna cooperate with us, but I have him on a leash here just to, uh, he was a little bit un unpredictable. So we'll put it over there, we're gonna let him see if he wants to take it, and of course he's not gonna to wanna to go take it. But let's say he was over there and he has the object. Now when they have it, their head is gonna be downward orientated and they're gonna kinda of make that noise I made earlier and look to the side. So what you wanna do is look for that stiffness and that and you wanna catch him before he reacts. Once he barks and lunges at you, you push him too far, he's basically hysterical. So if the dog is over there, I'm just gonna pantomime as if he is over there because uh, it's not necessarily to see it. Um, it what we wanna do is as we're approaching the dog where it has the item, we're gonna take note, we're just gonna walk casually, but we're gonna be watching the dog intently. And as soon as the dog freezes, gets stiff, starts holding his breath or breathing heavy, or growls, or bears its teeth or any of those things, He's saying, if you get any closer, I'm going to explode. So let's say that we're approaching this, we get to 12 feet, and that's when he gets stiff. Well, we immediately stop, we turn around and walk away. We go and get some high value training treats. I use like using chicken liver. And then I'm gonna approach. Now, 12 feet was the distance that we determined that that's when he gets stiff. So we're gonna approach, we're gonna stop at maybe 14 feet or 13 feet. We're gonna stop before he gets stiff. When we're outside of the range where he feels like we're a threat. And then we're gonna throw an object, a, a treat, at the dog, and then we're gonna turn around and walk away. And then we're gonna come from a different angle and repeat the same process. The idea is we're gonna keep on approaching it from different angles so the dog practices. When he approaches this angle, he's not here to take my stuff. Ollie! We'll give you Hogwarts first. See if he'll come over there. 
I'd like to see if you have a resource card for this. It just makes a video so you can see it. Good job, Ollie. 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 Oh, you got to get me your Hogwarts. smart dog. He's getting them all. Ollie. Now, the Guardian, one of the Guardians is debating whether or not he's going to guard this, and one of the Guardians is like, maybe he won't do it, and she's like, always does it for this one. Of course, on TV, on a film, he won't do it. So basically, what you want to do is, again, no, maybe he will. I think he's just looking for treats, but we'll see if he does. So um, if he has the object, again, the more we try to take it, forcibly take it away, the more we're going to reinforce it. So I'm going to pretend like Ollie's over there, and you're probably only going to see me from the neck down, and that's okay for this. So let's say that, uh, that right here where this line is, where the edge of the towel, let's say this is the line where he gets stiff. So I'm just gonna kind of walk up. If that's where he gets stiff, I stop here a foot away from it. I toss a treat towards it, and then I turn and walk away. The next time I might walk from this angle, and 12 feet is probably about here. So I stop, I throw a treat, and I walk away. Go ahead, go ahead and get buddy. Yeah. I'm standing, so uh, let me, let me sit down so I can put my back to it. That would make him more comfortable like I'm getting him. I can watch him a little bit in the reflection of the heel. So of course he's not thinking about doing it now because uh, that would be too easy for us. Right, Ollie? Whatever. All right. So what we're saying is when, when you have a high value item and we approach, we're not a threat to take your stuff. We're actually going to make your situation better. Now the idea is, let's say it's 12 feet. We want to come practicing at 14 feet. And have we done that five, 10 times and he seems completely relaxed, he's not really looking at us. Then we go to 13 feet and then eventually 12 feet and then 11 feet. And when he gets to the point where he starts getting stiff, take note of whatever that distance is and then back up, practice a couple at the previous distance. So we have the last thing he remembers of this encounter was something good. And then we walk away. Uh, now it sucks because some, you know, we're not taking the thing away from him and, but we have to get past this hurdle. And if I figure out a way that, or if I go and forcibly take it away from him, it's just gonna reinforce it. So what we do when he is resource guarding like that, you can, you know, if you've done this a couple times and you walk away, then go in the kitchen and maybe scoop up some of his food or open the door and go outside. Don't call him, don't ask him to come. Just open the door and all of you guys walk outside. And he's like, I got my stuff. No, they don't seem to want my stuff. They're all outside having, and they have the kids playing around, having a good time. Hopefully he comes out and he's not, he doesn't have the resource, then one of us can very quietly come and close the door to the house, and that way he can't get back to the object and we remove the object. Now, if he does get something that's absolutely, you have to take it away, it's dangerous, it's uh, poisonous for him or something like that, what you can do, and I would not recommend this, but basically you take a collar, uh, a leash like this, and you run the end of the leash through that and it creates a lariat. And what you can do is drop it over the dog's head and then pull the head up. If a dog's nose is out of that orientation, most of the time that stops the resource guarding. But again, I would only do this in an incredible emergency. The last thing you want to do, the more you do it, the more you're validating. Um, so uh, this, is a, this technique is uh, something pioneered by Jean Donaldson, who's a world famous uh, dog behaviorist and dog trainer. And she wrote a book on it. It's called Mine, M-I-N-E with an exclamation point. There we go. Oh, he's getting the treats. Let's see if I can approach. We'll see now that he's kind of over there. If he will, I don't think he is. No, no stiffness was walking away. So he's not, he's not resource guarding. So we're going to kind of wrap this as a little bit of a longer video. Ollie, sit, sit. This is Ollie. And these are some tips and tricks you can use if you have a dog that likes to resource guard.